Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be packaging up my electric bike to take it on a flight. I've got my e-bike back here, this is the Priority Current, and I just got this new uh, Borson bag from Elite, so I'm going to test it out and see how this goes. Let's check it out. Alright, so this is a soft-sided bag. What's nice is it has wheels, and it's got uh, wheels in the front and back, so you can actually roll this thing pretty easily, you don't have to tip it up. Let's see what we got inside here. Wheel bag, another wheel bag, some foam protectors. Should be some attachments for putting the fork on here. Ah, here we go, attachments. All right, now you do want to take your battery out of your e-bike, so I'm gonna pop the battery out here. These cannot fly with the bike, unfortunately. Every airline's got different regulations, but pretty much all of them don't allow the battery. So I'll talk about what to do with this in a minute, but we'll put this to the side. And now we can focus on prepping the bike. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take out the front wheel. This bike has a through axle, but you can also do this with a quick release skewer. And there are different attachments in there for different types of axles. And then once I have this wheel out, I'm going to immediately put in one of these uh, shims or spacers so I don't accidentally mess up my hydraulic disc brakes. You don't wanna squeeze those levers while you've got the wheel out. Now let's get the back off. Now this is a little bit trickier because I've got this internally geared hub here in the back. This is the Enviolo. So uh, I gotta start by taking these cables out for the shifter. So I haven't done this before, but I did watch a video. So they say you put it in highest gear and then you can pop out the first cable here. That seems to have come out pretty easily. If we shift the other way, should be able to pop out the second cable here. All right. Okay, they're both out. That was pretty painless. Now we can use a 15 millimeter wrench on these acorn nuts and remove the rear wheel. Slide that belt off, wheel out, and then again I'm going to put a shim in the disc brake calipers. This is from a different bike I had, so I'm hoping it fits here. Yeah, all right, that seems to fit. So next I need to take the pedals off of the bike. Again, 15 millimeter wrench is going to come in handy here. Now, I'm not sure if I need to take these fenders off. Definitely looks like that rear one's going to have to come off. Hopefully I can leave the front one on. Uh, let's place this in here and see what happens. Yeah, that, uh, that rear one looks offending. All right, let's get that off. All right, so like everything that I do, this turned out to be more complicated than I expected. The rear fender has a wire running through it to the tail light which is riveted in place so I can't unscrew, and I can't reach the connector if there is one inside the motor. So I voided my warranty, severed this wire, and I will just solder it back with a waterproof connection when I get there. Not recommended for anybody else, by the way. All right, now let's mount this bike up in here. Now, because I've got a through axle up there, I'm going to choose the proper through axle uh, adapters here. So you unscrew these covers here, screw the adapters on all right now i can put my bike up here line everything up i have to slide this forward oh now it looks like we're resting okay all right so we're set up there looks like i'll have to pull my kickstand off man i love these ratcheting allen sets kickstand is off all right, now there's a strap here that ideally would go through your rear axle, whether it's a through axle or a quick release skewer, and would strap the rear end down to the beam in the bottom of this bag. The problem is, well, there's two problems here. One, because it's an electric bike with a mid-drive motor, the bike sits way higher so the strap doesn't really reach. And two, I don't have a rear axle because I have an internally geared hub and the axle is part of the wheel. So I don't have a through axle or a skewer to stick back in here. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative here. I think I can use a little climbing rope to create a soft rear axle and just strap that down. And that'll keep the back of the bike from being able to lift up and move around. Rabbit goes up around the tree, back down through the hole. All right. Now I can strap around this. There we go. And it should be golden. All right, yeah. There we go. Now wheels in the wheel bags and here I've got some disc protectors aha disc protected I don't know how well those are gonna work on my internally geared hub though those do not like to sit over the hub 
but I think they'll be okay. Right, now we can stick these in the wheel bags. There's one. And on this one, I'm gonna go grab some foam and try to package the fender on top of it. Let's try that. And do a little zip tie action here. Hopefully that will keep the fender nice and protected. All right, two wheels. All right, let's pull these handlebars off. All right, I'll let those rest for a minute there. And now it is time to wrap the crap out of this thing. <laughs> Guess I can start with the protection they give. All right, so with their wraps, they aren't really meant for this type of uh, handlebar or e-bike with these components on the handlebars, but I think I got some pretty decent protection and then I'm gonna add my own just to be safe. All right, so I don't think you can get any more wrapped up and protected than that. So now I'm just gonna zip tie this nicely onto the side here so these wires and cables aren't stressed. All right, and theoretically, that's all there is to it. Could probably drop the seat down. And everything else should be held in there. I mean, this is rigidly connected to the bottom of the bag. That's just sort of the bag moving there. So if I were to start zipping this up, that would do it. Except I gotta put the wheels in. <laughs> Can you tell I've never done this before? All right, while I got this partially closed, I can stick the pedals and any other pieces like the kickstand in these inner pockets that they give you here. I'll wrap one in bubble wrap so they don't scratch each other. Same thing for the kickstand. Seems like as good a place as any for that. Huh. That actually looks better than I thought it was going to. All right, how heavy is this thing? It's not light, but not too bad. And that's it, let's head to the airport. And I almost forgot to talk about this. So, what do you do with the battery when you fly? Most airlines are not going to take it. Check if they will, there might be something they'll do for you, but most of the time you're going to need to ship it. This is considered hazardous material when you ship it, so you gotta go through a shipper that can handle that. A few years ago, I got my hazmat certification through FedEx, so I can actually ship these personally through FedEx. It's kind of an annoying thing to go through if you just want to do one battery, but I do this from time to time. You can also go to places like uh, bike flights that deal with shipping uh, bicycles, and specifically electric bicycles, and they have solutions for shipping these. You should not fly with this. If you did, you'd want to drain the battery all the way to empty, you know, ride the bike all the way until it just powers down so there's not much energy left in this, but like I said, you should not fly with this. If you did, you would want to package it incredibly well, but you should not fly with this. And if you did, it would be better to put it in your carry-on if they will let you get on the plane with it instead of your checked bag. So if something did happen, you had a better chance of dealing with it, but you should not fly with one of these. All right, I think I've made the point there. Now let's actually head to the airport. Now the reason you want to pack these bikes so well is because they're going to go through probably a dozen different handoffs before they make it back to you on the other side. Fortunately, I was pretty amazed to see from my seat on the plane when they were unloading my bag from my first flight, the guy was actually pretty gentle with it. I mean, not like a baby or anything, but I figured these would get tossed around a lot worse. And, you know, he was pretty good about making sure it was on its wheels and, and being fairly gentle with it. So props to at least one guy along the way that treated this bike well. Once I made it to the other side, my bag was waiting for me at the oversized luggage counter. I just had to pick it up, and then I had one long taxi ride home with this bag basically sitting on my lap. Okay, I have arrived, and so has my bike, and uh, now it is time to start opening up and seeing how it was treated along the way. Now, I did add a bit more packaging here just to uh, protect it a little more. I went around the motor and the battery port here. So far, things are looking so good. All right, so the end of the axle actually punched through the wheel cover, which doesn't surprise me. It has shifted, but hopefully that disc is still true. These wheel covers aren't really meant for this type of hub. 
All right, everything's looking good over here. I did not bring my new ratchet tool. I probably should have, but these Allen keys will do the trick. Now we can take a look at the second wheel. Everything looks pretty good here. The fender even appears to have come through unscathed, so that's good. All right, so everything seems pretty good. Now this loosened up a bit back here, but the bike seems to have stayed on the mount just fine. Open up that quick release. And actually before I put that rear wheel in, I'm gonna reconnect the cable that I cut on the fender for the rear light. All right, so there's that wire I had to cut. I'm gonna strip that. Those seem pretty solid. All right, and my battery also arrived, and I have had it on the charger for a few hours, so it should be partially charged. Should be able to pop that sucker in there. Haha, <laughs> it turns on. Phew. All right, so that was actually more involved than I expected it to be, but I got the bike together in the end. I watched a video on flying with a bike before I did this and how to pack it up and everything. But the guy did it with a road bike and it was like five minutes to put it in the bag and another five minutes to take it out and put the couple of pieces back together. So it's certainly more complicated with an e-bike, but it wasn't too bad. The weirdest part on this one was that I couldn't get the rear fender completely off because it had that embedded wire and I had to cut it and then splice it back when I was done. That's probably not going to happen with your e-bike because it's not so common to have a tail light embedded in the rear fender but it's just uh, a good example of the things you have to look out for when you're flying with an e-bike because they do have some uh, additional complications. But fortunately, the bike made it in the end. It seems to be in perfect shape, uh, no worse for wear, so it was treated pretty well and the bag worked great, it would appear. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, last but not least, before we go, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Sapo Sylvester. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like, either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles, and let me know where to send it. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below, you can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the winner at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching everybody, see you next time. Mm -hmm.